Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades and welcome to another video. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to mount a set of deer antlers using supplies which you can purchase at any craft store. You don't need to buy a deer antler mounting kit or anything like that. You can buy all the stuff you need at any craft uh, store and through some hardware that you can buy at any hardware store. So let's stop talking and let's get right into the project. And welcome back. So let's get into the project. But before we do, if you're liking what you see here on the Jack of All Trades channel, I'd really appreciate you smashing that like and subscribe button down below. Uh, less than 50% of the people who watch these videos actually subscribe. And uh, hit that notification bell so you get notified of upcoming videos. I do a video every week on Saturday morning, so the notification bell is kind of a moot point. But it does let you know just in the off chance that I do post something outside of those time frames that a new video came up. Okay, let's get right into the project. So I have a set of deer antlers here. Uh, this was a set of antlers that came off of deer that my father harvested uh, several years ago, but long before he died. Uh, and so we, it's, we just cut the skull plate off and it's been sitting like this for a number of years. And I'm finally gonna get around to uh, mounting it to a board. Uh, it never did get mounted because he just went ahead and hung them right up at the cabin and that's kind of where they stayed. I have now taken them down. I'm gonna mount them to a board and I'm going to do some fun stuff with this project uh, just to maybe give you some ideas on what you can do. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and let's talk about some of the materials and some of the things that we're going to use to get this project done. All right, aside from the antlers themselves, here are just some of the things that you're going to need. And obviously, you're going to need a wood plaque uh, as a backing plaque. Uh, I bought this at one of my local craft stores and I went with this oversized plaque for a reason because I'm going to mount the antlers up high and then I'm actually going to decoupage a picture of my father with the deer uh, the day he got it below. So it's, so it's got actually a picture of the, of the day that he took the deer. Uh, you're going to need a, a round wood disc. Again, I bought this at a craft store. This one is a 5 inch diameter disc. I find the 4 or 5 inch discs generally work the best depending on the size of the deer and the size of the antlers. But a 5 inch disc is what I use most of the time. Uh, some rope. So this rope is it's a uh, seven millimeter rope or 0.2 inch rope. It's just very inexpensive rope. This is what we're going to use to trim around the antlers with. And then you'll need some high strength large hole sheetrock repair. Now this stuff's got fiberglass reinforcing in it. It's got some spackling compound in it. And when you use this, it actually gets very, very strong. And that's what I'm going to use to actually mold around the skull cap, uh, but you'll see that when I do it. And something to cover the antlers with. Now, when I did my daughter's first buck, uh, she's a real big fan of buffalo plaid, so I did hers in red and black buffalo plaid. Uh, this one, I'm going to do something a little different. This is more reminiscent of something my father would have worn. Uh, it's kind of a, a, a white and gray and black buffalo plaid. This is what I'm going to use. I think it's going to make a really nice look. Some of the tools you're going to need, you're going to need a stapler. You're also going to need a hot glue gun. Uh, you're going to need a drill with a small drill bit because you have to pre-drill holes before you run the screws in it or else you'll uh, risk cracking the wood and cracking the antlers. Uh, a screw gun or a screwdriver uh, to work the screws if you don't have a screw gun. And uh, a spackling knife or a putty knife. And then uh, some water, some paper towels, some various other items that you're going to need to get this project done. And then as far as finishing the board, you can use whatever finish you want. You can use polyurethane, you can use uh, tongue oil, you can use whatever you like. I happen to have some leftover tabletop epoxy uh, from another project that I did. And I actually did this with my daughter's uh, mount. And I'm going to use this again to do this one to finish the board in. It just makes a really nice, shiny, heavy, durable uh, look to it. And since I already have it, and as expensive as that stuff is, I don't want to throw it away, so I might as well get some use out of it. So that's the basic tools. So let's go ahead and let's, uh, let's start the project and let's get this thing going. 
All right, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to gonna need to fit the antlers to the piece of round block wood that we've got here. Uh, this should be fairly simple. Now, depending on how you cut your skull cap, of course, this is all going to uh, vary from application to application. But you can see here there's already a hole, one hole here, where we had it hanging on the wall up at the cabin already. So I've already got a hole. So I'm basically just going to take these antlers and I'm going to center them on the wood block here and I'm going to center them just a little bit on the high side. I'm going to take an inch and five eighths screw. I'm going to mark the hole where the screw needs to go. And then I'm going to take my drill and I'm just going to make a start of a hole. I'm not going to get deep with it. I'm just going to start it a little bit just to make a little bit of a divot. Take my screw, find the hole. Now you can use a screw gun or you can use just a regular hand screwdriver to do this. If you're going to use a screw gun, just be a little bit careful. Don't overdo it. Don't get crazy with the torque or you'll crack the skull cap. In fact, a lot of times what I like to do is I like to just get it started and get it most of the way there. Then I can take and I can turn the antlers and get everything nice and centered the way I want it to and then use a hand screwdriver to finish it off and to snug it up. Don't over torque this, you could crack the skull cap. Now, these screws are a little long. As you can see, it poked through the back side here. That's fine, you can grind that off later. Uh, we'll take care of that after a bit. So now that I've got that first screw in and I've kind of got the wood and the antlers all lined up the way I want them, I'm gonna take my drill and I'm gonna drill a second hole. I'm gonna avoid the, the, uh, the seams here in the skull, as everybody knows, these skulls uh, are in pieces and they're joined together with bone. I'm just going to take another, take a drill and I'm just going to drill another hole. Okay, I've got my hole drilled. Now the reason we're drilling a second hole is so that the antlers don't twist when they're mounted to the wood. Go ahead and stick my screw in there. Get my screw gun, get it snugged up, and there it is. So the wood is now mounted to the antlers. Now I'm going to go over to the grinder and I'm going to grind off the back side of that screw. So now that we've got the wood mounted to the antlers, we're going to take the board that we're going to mount them to and we're going to find the position that we want this. So now that I've got the position of where I want the antlers, I'm going to take a pencil and I'm just going to mark the four sides of where the antlers are going to sit approximately. And then I'm going to take and put them aside. So here's my marks. That's about where the plate is going to sit. Then I'm going to take my drill and I'm going to drill two holes completely through the board that I'm going to mount the antlers to. So there they are. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these back in the position like this, re-verify that that's where I want it. Yes, that's where I want it. You can set the antlers up like this and they kind of kind of hold themselves and then I'm going to take the board and I'm going to set the board on top and then I'm going to physically go underneath here and I'm going to kind of try to line up my pencil marks ish like so. Now I'm going to take another one of those inch and five eighths screws. Not get too tight. And I'm going to take, flip it over, readjust everything the way I want it. It's about centered. Perfect. I'll flip it back over. Take my second screw and run that in. Okay, so that's the way I'm going to mount the antlers. This is basically just a dry fit. This is how I want the, the antlers to look. The picture I'm going to put on is going to be right down here, right below it. This is exactly how I want these antlers to sit. 
Now that I know that, I can take it all back apart again. All right, so now it's time to uh, go ahead and use the uh, spackling compound to form the antler shape. Now what I like to do is I like to take an ice cream pail lid and then I'll go ahead and I'll scoop out a whole bunch of this spackling compound as much as I think I'm going to need. Uh, don't worry if you put on too much because you can always put it back in the container when it's all said and done. Now this stuff sometimes gets a little dry and it will get flaky and pieces will fall off and it can be sometimes a little hard to work with but that's actually fairly easy to fix with just a little bit of water and I'll show you that here in a second take a little bit of water doesn't need much just add some water to the uh, to the product just a few drops doesn't really take much at all and kind of work it into a paste if you will now you may want to use rubber gloves if you don't like getting this stuff on your hand but the nice thing is is it's water soluble and it comes off your hands very very easily okay so now we've got our paste ready I get my antlers and it's time to build up build up the antler base so what I do is I generally just take and I squish some in the hole there fill that hole up as best I can doesn't need to be perfect and then just put the paste all around the antlers I always like to put on way more than I need the upside of this is this is also all going to get covered up by the fabric so perfection is not is not the key here don't overwork it don't overthink it once you get it to a point where you've got everything as covered as you need it to have it covered stop and let it dry and that's where I'm gonna leave it now I'm gonna set it aside and I'm gonna let it dry off and I'll come back to it in a few hours once that is all dried up alright so like I said my intention is fully to Put a picture down here so this is the picture of my father uh, when he when he took this deer so uh, that's the photo I'm going to use that's the only one I have so uh, like I said before you can put any finish on this board that you so desire I'm going to use that tabletop epoxy but there's a process so if you're going to do the same thing that I'm doing here uh, follow these steps so this is water-based polyurethane which I'm going to coat the entire board with, the entire thing, uh, even the edges. I'm going to do it all because the uh, tabletop epoxy will soak into the edges if they're not sealed and they'll have a dry look to them. But if you seal them up with polyurethane, they won't have a dry look. Now this board happens to be very nicely sanded and finished so it shouldn't soak up too bad but I'm still going to use polyurethane all the way around the edges on the board and on the rest of the board I'm sure I've got complete coverage over the whole thing Put a little more on. I want it especially heavy right here because I'm actually going to use the polyurethane as an adhesive to stick the photo. Okay, so that's that. Now I take my picture. I'm going to place it where I want it. I'm set a weight on it right like that. Polyurethane can is a little more additional weight. Seal the edges a little bit with the brush. Then I'm going to let it dry. Alright, so the uh, first coat of poly is dry. 
feels like the edges of the picture are all laid down. Go ahead and shake it back up again and I'm going to put another coat of poly on uh, just to make sure that that picture is good and sealed down. Alright, so that's the last coat of poly. Go wash out my brush. We'll come back tomorrow when everything is dry and we will uh, finish the project up. Alright, so it's the next day and the polyurethane is dry. Now, in reality, if a person wanted to, you could put one or two more coats of polyurethane on this and go with it as is. Like I said before, I'm going to use uh, some tabletop epoxy and I'm going to go with that because I really like the look. Now, I'm not going to go over how to use the tabletop epoxy. Uh, I'll do a little time lapse video here of me putting it on, but uh, that's a whole other video for a whole other day. Uh, all I have to say about that is make sure you use the manufacturer's instructions for uh, for applying the epoxy and that's that's as far as we're going to go with it. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up my epoxy and pour it on here and we'll get her done. Alright, so we've got the last coat on, so now we've got to let it sit for 24 hours to dry and fully cure, and then we can go on with the project. So while we're letting the epoxy cure, uh, the, uh, the sheetrock patch has set, up, has set up and is ready to go. So now we just take some sandpaper, and it's, it's no real mystery, you just use some sandpaper to smooth out all the rough edges and shape this the way you want it to shape. Now you need a little bit of a gap in here so you can get the rope around there uh, when it comes time to do that. But this actually shapes really well with just straight up sandpaper. You don't have to get any more aggressive than that. And just go around and smooth out all your rough edges and make this look the way you want it to look. Now remember, it's all going to get covered up, of course, by fabric, so it doesn't need to be perfect. But you just get it the way you want it. Uh, there's no right or wrong. Uh, I don't get it super perfect, I just get it close and I run with it. Okay, so I've got it basically shaped the way I want. Now like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, one of the reasons I go with a a pattern fabric is it covers up a lot of imperfections and flaws now if you're going to use something like velvet or something that's got a single color to it you have to be a little more precise on uh, on your sanding but with this being a pattern fabric we don't need to be nearly as precise so now what we have to do is we just basically have to cover this with the fabric so we basically just kind of guesstimate about how much we're going to need and we'll cut about that much of it off right there. Now this little swatch of fabric I bought, it cost me like a buck and there's enough there to do a couple. So there's, there's about how much I need. Now I got to get around the antlers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut a slit on the back side here because I want I want the the cuts to be on the back side of the antlers so you don't see them as much I mean there's nothing nothing you can do about it you have to uh, you have to cut a slit in there somewhere and again it doesn't need to be precise because we're gonna put rope around those antler bases and that's gonna cover up a lot so the next one will be right about there Just 
something like that. Now I'm going to take and flip them over and start stapling. So I'm just going to put one staple in just to get it started. Uh, yep, I can work with that, I think. All right, so now what we have to do is we have to wrap the rope around the bases of the antlers. And the way I do this is I usually start on the back side of the rope and you're going to have to kind of tuck it in there, uh, especially if you did like I did and didn't leave enough gap in there. And then get that, get that seam in the back and then hot glue it down in there really good. And then once the hot glue is cooled, you have to kind of wrap the rope around, get a measurement. And then we're going to have to cut it. So then I just take my hot glue gun. Run some hot glue down inside the next to the base of the antler there. Push it down into the plate and hold it there until the glue cools. Continue bringing it around. there it is the skull cap is basically wrapped and ready to get mounted on the board uh, as soon as the board is finished curing all right so now the board is cured uh, I've gone ahead and I've inserted the the top screw and using the hole that you made earlier when you kind of dry fitted the antlers go ahead and screw the top screw into the antler Snug it up a little bit and then use the bottom screw to find the other hole and there I found it. You can feel it when you when you start turning it in. You can very easily feel the hole when you get in there. And you'll notice I'm not using my screw gun to do this. I'm using a hand screwdriver. That's on purpose. I don't want to over torque anything. I've got it all locked down and there's the mount. So now the last thing I got to do is I got to wrap the base of the uh, the base of the antler mount in the same rope that I wrapped the antlers in. Now you wouldn't necessarily have to do this but I think it just finishes everything off and it makes everything look really nice and you basically use the same procedure that you did when you wrap the antlers just using a little bit of hot glue and just work the rope around and work it into place. And there it is, that's the completed mount. Everything is done. A little couple of glue strings I gotta clean up yet, but for the most part, the, the mount is done. I gotta hang, uh, hang a hanger on the backside so we can actually hang this on the wall and it's all said and done with. So uh, 
very I'm happy with the way it turned out very happy with the way it turned out I'm not a very crafty individual so to do something like this kind of wears on my patience a little bit but uh, if you just stick to it and get it get to it you can get it done all right so you may ask okay what does it cost to do a project like this well with all the stuff I bought at the craft store uh, the polyurethane and things of that effect the whole project cost me about 30 bucks now I know you can go online and you can buy deer antler mounting kits for $20 or $19.99 but I'm here to tell you I've used those kits before they're not the greatest quality you have to cut the antlers off the skull cap and then it's always kind of a trick to try and get the antlers to line up right to make them look like they're in a natural position this way if you do it like this it's got some advantages you're utilizing the existing bone structure of the skull to keep the antlers in a natural position uh, everything you, you use to build this is readily accessible at your local hobby stores Amazon any number of places and it other than the time you know it took to let the epoxy dry and let the let the sheetrock uh, repair paste and and spackling compound dry I mean yeah it took a little time it took me a couple of days to get it done but it was well worth it in the long run I think I've got a little nicer product it's a little more personal uh, because I did it my father did harvest this deer and it kind of has a little bit of a sentimental value and personal value in my in, for me in that respect uh, this is going to go back up to the cabin and it's going to get hung up on the wall uh, right next to all the other deer that we take when we're up there hunting so for me the the 30 or 35 dollars it costs to mount something like this is well worth the time the effort and the money so that all being said let's go ahead and wrap up this video now if you like projects like this please let me know in the comments i'll try to come up with some more and do more projects like this uh, give me any suggestions in the comments that you would like to see me do and i'll see if i can accommodate uh, and if you're liking what i do here and you like the jack of all trades channel you'll be doing me a huge solid by smashing that like and subscribe button down below make sure you ring that notification bell so you get notified of upcoming videos although i do put out a video every week saturday morning eight o'clock like clockwork you can't miss it with that this is ed from jack of all trades thank you for stopping by thank you to all the people who watch my videos thank you to all my subscribers I really appreciate each and every one of you, and we will see you on the next video.